my brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this great mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And my friends, let us listen to the gospel with the ear of the heart.
was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, let us listen to God's word with the ear of the heart. Wisdom, be attentive. The Lord God has given me a very strange tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will love them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not feel from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my head, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For it is written, 
I'll strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Goodbye. Though all men have their faith in you, Satan, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny it. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came to them to a place for Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here a while. I'm going to go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He at once a little and Philip was staying in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. When he retained his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he remained once more and found them asleep. For they would not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer, his betrayer arranged the sign of them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand in his wall, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the clouds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I have sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest. 
where the spines and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire sanctuary kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest wore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further mean have we of witnesses? You have not heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they slammed his face and struck him, while some slammed him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside at the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilee. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out of the way, another girl spoke him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it that is our Lord. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately they called for them. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock calls, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money to the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said to Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of the man with the price on his head, a price set by some of his hands, and they paid it out of the potter's field 
just down below the cat, the man in the vision. Now Jesus stood before the girl and he questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying right against you? But he did not answer me one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him, sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas or to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in the crowd, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do, Jesus called not Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the Lord, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and watered his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the poor people said, said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus heard, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the government put Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and they reigned in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the ring and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloth, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man had pressed in the service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the sky, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with the God. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting logs. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they raised over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, 
You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it, rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down to the cross. Likewise, the three priests, the scribes and elders, know what he might say. He saved others, he cannot save of himself. So he is the king of his life. Let him come down the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him was kept abusing him in the same way. From new on world, darkness came over the whole land and the three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for a life. Immediately one of them ran to get a spot. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save me. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they endured the holy city and appeared to men. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake more than was happening. And they said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. Disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb. He had hewn the clock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene, the other maid, remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one called the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter wisely alive said, After three days I will be raised up. He warned us then that the grave be secure until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from death. This 
last impulse would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The God is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the star and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ.
and then chose Barabbas. For them it was all the same. It seemed more entertaining to humiliate Jesus. Am I like the soldiers who strike the Lord, spit on him, insult him, who exercise their power through cruelty? Am I like the serenity who was returning home from work weary? It was good enough to help the Lord carry his cause. Am I like those who walked by the cross and mocked Jesus? He was so courageous. Let him come down from the cross, and then we will believe in him, mocking Jesus. Am I like those fearless women and like the mother of Jesus who were there and then suffered in silence? Am I like Joseph of Arimathea, the hidden disciple, who lovingly carries the body of Jesus to give it burial? Am I like the two mirrors who remained at the tomb? question we made with us throughout our celebration of Holy Week. My friends, let us join together in proclaiming our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, humbled himself. He became human, even to the point of death, death on a cross. With great confidence in the power of the cross, we now lift up our petitions. Our response is, Lo, hear our prayer. For the Church, that this commemoration of Holy Week brings new to vigor to the work of spreading the Gospel of Jesus, the name above all names, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the world, that the power of Christ crucified may leave lands torn apart by violence to make a commitment to justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those justly convicted of violent crime. That the suffering of Christ instill a sincere desire to change their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for this community of faith. That our land of servants will continue to bear fruit. Throughout the coming year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lady and Doer of Lords may help us undo the knots that impede us 
from fully understanding the divinity of life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of our prayers, especially those afflicted with the coronavirus, all our injured men and women in the armed forces, and for all the glory in our good of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those killed by the coronavirus, those killed in conflict and natural disasters throughout the world, and all our men and women who gave their lives for our country, but having saved the bread of life, they may sit together someday in the great heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy and light of them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. And my friends, as we present the gifts of bread and wine, I invite you to place your hearts and your needs on this Eucharistic table in communion with our good Lord. Let us pray together, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, God of the God of all his children. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your
and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Who has pleaded you throughout the age 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, of the power, and the glory, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, in your your spirit. Spirit. and we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thanks for praying with us today. Thanks for joining in this sacred celebration, the beginning of Holy Week. I invite you to look on our Facebook page and our website for the full schedule of our Holy Week prayer services masses and liturgies. This year is very different for all of us, but somehow I take great solace as I think about Mary Magdalene waiting at the tomb. And even though she's overcome by deep distress, somehow the hope of resurrection is already emerging in her heart. We love you, my friends. Take good care and let us stay close in the solidarity of prayer. God bless you and protect you. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Amen. We take it with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.